So we all know that millennials are more and more left wing, more and more progressive. That's a variety of reasons. Uh, in many respects, as I've argued, it's because they are living with, we are living with the tangible results of policies that started under, under Carter in some respects, accelerated under Reagan, and were um, accepted and somewhat ameliorated under Clinton, and uh, exacerbated again under Bush, and again somewhat ameliorated and somewhat accepted under Obama. So you have a generation that is filled with debt, poverty, lack of opportunity. Yes. Not to mention the Iraq war and the bank bailout. Not to mention the Iraq invasion and the bank bailout. So this whole cluster of ideas um, and policies has been shown to be disastrous, but not in an abstract way, a very lived way. And there's really interesting new research because, again, we, we sort of all know that it's in, certainly in the Democratic primary, overwhelmingly young people are going with the progressive candidate. But this change, according to research uh, that was conducted um, by a couple of researchers uh, out of the University of California, San Diego, documents that it's also young Republicans that are getting a little bit more sane. So Republicans under 30 are more likely or self-identify as moderates and self-identify as conservatives at about an equal number, according to this research, which is summarized in Vox. They're also much more likely to hold more moderate positions on immigration and on marriage equality and gay rights. So obviously we all sort of know that the social issues are moving in the right direction how this will translate into the economic issues we don't know yet but certainly that kind of base division in the republican party on social issues is coming apart if these numbers are to be believed and the other really important part of this study is that they there's this notion of quote generational imprinting and this has been documented since the 1950s. I'm going to quote now from Vox. Quote, it's a simple idea. Essentially, young people decide their political identities when they are coming of age politically or when they first really begin paying attention to what's going on in politics. Partisan, and now this is Jacobs, partisan identities are adopted in early childhood, stabilize quickly, and therefore become highly resistant to more transient change. Political events and personalities have their most lasting influence during the stage of life when partisan identities are being formed. And again, because this isn't just an abstract or social identification, it is a lived result of the conservative and neoliberal disaster that millennials have been shaped by across privilege and economic scales. This identity is shifting. Even as on the right, the xenophobic social politics are losing their appeal. So the conflict, again, is going to become much more sort of transparent between the desires and the wills of the populace and what research like Martin Gillen shows, which is that functionally we aren't in a democracy because of the imbalance of oligarchs on the policymaking process. But the less people are wed to a delusional ideology about how things, be, how things actually work, and the more sort of aggressively progressive people come, the conflict between those special interests and what people actually desire will come to the fore and we will have a much more uh, dynamic, conflicting, interesting, and potentially transformative policy. Hi, I'm Sam Cedar, and this is an Ann Coulter doll. You should not be immigrating here. Yeah. Stay in your country and hate us. For smart progressive talk and a little bit of this and even a little bit of that. Mission accomplished. Subscribe to our podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and like us on Facebook to get some of our best video clips.